This is section 1.3, Average Rate of Change. In this video, we're going to go through number 45 in your book. And this is an example of a word problem involving average rate of change. So 45 tells us that a driver started pumping gas exactly at 3.40 and stopped at 3.44 p.m. In this time, he had pumped 10.7 gallons. What is the average rate of flow of the gasoline into the gas tank? Okay, so remember average rate of change, we find that by finding the difference in our y's over the difference in the x's. What makes it difficult with word problems though is that we have all this information and we need to figure out what they're telling us, what these values represent. Because we know that in order to find that rate of change, we'll need some set of x and y values. We just need to determine what our x and y values are in terms of the word problem that we have. So one way to think about this is that you see the question, they're asking for the average rate of flow of gas into the tank. If you were to answer this question, you would say, well, there was this many gallons in the tank per this many units of time. So maybe like three gallons per second. That might be how you might answer this question. So you know that your answer is gonna be some types of gallons per time. In this case, we're gonna say minutes. So you know that on top, your Y values are going to be your gallons, and on bottom, your x values are going to be your minutes, right? Because this correlates to the average rate of change. You have some number of gallons per some number of minutes. Also, if you're confused as to which variable should represent your x and your y, if you have a unit of time, that's generally always going to be your x variable, like miles per hour or something. That's generally um, your input variable. That's the one that determines what the other variable is doing. So we go back to our word problem, and we see that we have two measurements of time here, and we also have a measurement of gallons. So like we just said, our measurement of time, those are going to be our x's, and our measurement of gallons, that's going to be our y, or our output value. Okay, so x is equal to time, y is equal to gallons. Now we just need to have two sets of points that we can plug into our rate of change formula in order to find the average rate of change. So we have two points, or two times here. We have 340, 344. I can't write 340 as an x value, so I'm gonna say 340 is at time zero. This is my x1. And 344 is my x2. But I'm gonna write that as four, because that is four minutes past my starting time, or at time zero. And now I think about my y values. So Remember, y represents the number of gallons in the tank. At time zero, how many gallons were in the tank? Well, I hadn't started pumping, so zero gallons. So that means that these are my x1 and my y1 values, just zero, zero. And then I say, okay, I have my x2 at four minutes. At that time, how many gallons were in the tank? I go back to my problem, and they tell me that at 10, or sorry, at four minutes, 10.7 gallons were pumped into the tank. So that tells me that my y2 is 10.7. Okay, now I have my sets of x and y values. Now I can just plug these into my rate of change formula and solve. So I have that my y2 is 10.7. So I have 10.7 on top minus my y1, which is 0. Over on the bottom, my x2 is 4 minus my x1 is 0. Oops. Okay, and solving this out, you'll get 10.7 over 4. Put that in your calculator and you'll get that this equals about 2.7, remember your units, gallons per minute. And that's it for this problem. I think probably the hardest part was going through the word problem and identifying what your variables were and what values corresponded with those variables. Um, but remember, you can think about it in terms of what would you answer the question in. In this case, we'd answer it in terms of gallons per minute. So that told us what our y and x values were. Or you can also think that if you have a unit of time, that's most likely going to be what your x value is. Other than that, that's it for this problem. The concepts covered in this video are true no matter what pre-cal class you're in. But in case you're interested, all the problems referenced in this book came from this lovely book right here. Remember that if you're a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring on the first floor of Sidrich. You can either make an appointment or drop in whenever you're available to get tutoring in pre-cal, calculus, and a bunch of other subjects as well. Feel free to visit our website for more information.